Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. All right, guys, I got something really, really special for you guys. So as you guys know, you guys follow my YouTube channel, I talk a lot about graded cards and other rarities, but very rarely do I ever get a chance to actually show you the high-end cards when they're sold because a lot of collectors don't want me to discuss them about them. But in this particular case, I'm able to actually show you uh, some of the details of the sale um, and also show you uh, why this collector loves the cards so much. Now the collector is not gonna be filmed, but the cards are gonna be the superstar in this and also some of the history behind some of the reasons why uh, this collector collects. So let's go over it. This collector saw that I had some Power 9 cards, um, I had some services to offer, and I had a payment plan option. And what's very interesting is the payment plan option I use quite a bit over the years. And this client actually wanted to uh, use that option, but do it for you know, several year option, which I generally don't do. But in this particular case, I understand, you know, I understood that the value is very high. And also with knowing that, I wanted to give the collector the collector flexibility of payment. So um, this was a longer term deal. And I, I said that this was a million dollars in value of today. And I wanna be clear, I wasn't paid a million dollars, but the cards are worth that today. In this case, you guys are probably thinking, man, Dan, you put a lot of money on the table because I obviously didn't get a million dollars for this. I got a fraction of that. You know, I mean, I made a decent amount of money, several hundreds of thousands of dollars, but not a million dollars. So I want you guys to keep in mind because you guys watch my channel and MTG Finance and when you invest in stuff, you have to consider the future proofing, right? The pricing of that. In this particular case, it's not like I gambled in the sense that I sold the cards and I was happy with my price. And by the way, I'm not hating on the price or the sale. I'm happy 100%. I just want to share with you guys because when you sell something, you have to keep in mind long-term sales, when, especially in the last uh, year from 2017 to 2018, the prices from, for Magic has jumped considerably, especially for Alpha and Beta Power 9. So when you consider selling your cars long-term, I really want you guys to think about this. All right, so let's take a look at more of the deal. This, as you guys know, is the BGS 10 Beta Pristine Black Lotus. This is one of three in the world. I've actually graded all three of these cards and sold all three of these cards. This is actually the second one that was ever graded uh, by Beckett. Now, this particular one, it's interesting, is signed on the case by the original artist, Christopher Rush. And what's really great about this is, be, well, you know, what's really great about this is it has the best of both worlds. Collectors enjoy uh, the cards signed on the card and also the case. Let me give you an example of a card that's signed on the card. This particular card is a BGS 8.5 Alpha Mox Sapphire, signed on the card by Beckett. It's interesting because the subgrades we keep talking about are actually on the back of the card. And what's really, really, important to understand is that because of the label itself, it, there's not enough room for the actual card label, if you notice very carefully, because there's also an autograph grade. So not only is this a card grade, it's also an autograph grade and a card grade. So you get authentic authentication of the card, you get the autograph grade, grading, and you also get the actual card grade subgrades as you expect from Beckett. Um, so this collection has not only graded, car, uh, graded autograph cards and also ungraded cards too. All right, so let's talk about why people would want a signed card on the card versus a card that's not signed. It's kind of like one of the biggest debates ever. People, you know, there's people that really love signed cards on the card because it gives you that connection with the original artist. And then there's collectors who say, well, the card signed on the card is actually marked or damaged or, or you know, just inked. And that's not the case, but in many ways, you know, it gives that collector a certain type of uh, choice, you know. This particular collector actually really appreciates signed cards um, and preferred as many signed cards on the card as I could find. And this particular collection has a majority of the cards signed on the card. So uh, to that collector, it's, it builds a really personal touch. You know, it's almost as if like, you know, imagine like Babe Ruth or Mickey Mantle in baseball card world. Or if you talk about like Picasso or, you know, a famous painter, they actually touched that item and they hand signed it. And as you know, like in the art world, if you have a signed Picasso print, 
uh, Jacle, it's worth way more than a, a Jacle that's not signed. It's that personal touch. It's that uh, artist's signature. Uh, you know, it, it really defines the value to a lot of people. All right, so what's really, really interesting in the graded card world is subgrades. I mean, there is so many collectors who have fascinations on, oh, I want the best centering. I want the best corners, best edges, best surface. And every collector is different. But in the graded world, and for Beckett grading, there's four subgrades. There's corners, centering, edges, and surface. And basically, um, if you get all of the same subgrade as the overall grade, for example, if it's a 9.5 gem mint, and you get all 9.5s, that's considered a quad. If you receive a quad plus another subgrade above, it's called a quad plus. So in the case of the Alpha Black Lotus, this particular card is an exceptional pedigree. I don't have the exact number of Alpha Black Lotuses uh, 9.5s graded at this time. I think it's around almost 40, right? But out of that 40, I believe less than 10 are ever a quad. And quad pluses in this particular case, uh, it's probably, I would say, seven or so examples. So it makes the value exceptionally elite. It's almost like saying this Alpha Black Lotus, basically there's only one of seven theoretically in the world, even though there's 40 theoretically of 9.5 Alpha Black Lotuses, this puts it in an elite of elite category. Now, why would someone actually want to purchase a quad or a quad plus or high quality Alpha Black Lotus or any other Power 9 card? Well, the main reason why is, you know, some of it is because, you know, bragging rights. Some people want to say, hey, I want the best. I want the best car. I want the best Ferrari. You know, some people say, hey, I have the best Ferrari, but I also want the best color, the best styling, the rarest, uh, you know, engine, right? The best, best uh, exhaust. So in the world of grading, and in comic books or other collectibles, it's the same thing. You have collectors who want uh, the exceptional pedigree. This particular collector was a little different. Um, while he wanted, you know, the signed cards and the unsigned cards, subgrades wasn't a big deal. You'll notice that a lot of the, uh, the cards were not high-grade subs. For example, this is just a basic subgrade Alpha Time Twister. It's a very beautiful card, a very beautiful specimen. And so, um, it's not a quad though. Notice carefully, there is a nine also in the subgrade. And that wasn't important to the, to the collector. You know, the collector just wanted an overall grade of 9.5. All right, so in this collection, I wanna share with you one more iconic piece. It is, again, the BGS-10 Beta Black Lotus. This in the world of grading is the Ultimax or the ultimate of all grades. It is a 10 out of 10 in Beckett's grading. In fact, in PSA's grading, they have a 10 scale, but that equals equivalent to a gem mint to Beckett 9.5. The subgrades though, look very carefully. It's all, it has a 9.5. So if this was a 10 all across the board, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 right? Or 10, four 10s in a row. Basically, this card would be what you called a black label quad. And the value, instead of a quarter of a million dollars, this card could be the first possibly a million dollar beta card because it's so rare to find a quad uh, BGS-10 beta card. Now, I share with you guys the subgrades of this collection. It's really important to understand something. Um, I'm not sharing this video with you guys because, hey, you know, this is a bragging situation. This is an opportunity for you guys to see a piece of history. I don't very, very often get a chance to show you these type of things. But so even if you guys are collecting Revise or The Dark or the newest sets and graded cards, that's awesome. Always collect something you love. This particular collector loves collecting. And in some cases, you know, you might be fortunate enough to be able to afford some of these cards. Oftentimes I get asked the question, who are the people buying these cards? Why are they buying cards that are worth a car, a house? Are they crazy? The reality is, you know, in every industry, there's people that are whales or people that have made a lot of money, right? And these people like to invest in high profile cards and collectibles. Um, it's all relative. And keep in mind, you know, these people are not doing it for bragging purposes. They enjoy the collectibles. They enjoy the cards. So, in this particular case, this individual collector 
um, is a real estate man, uh, very successful, you know, overseas client, and has a tremendous love for magic. You know, he plays vintage. I believe he plays uh, stacks, which is like a workshop deck for vintage. Uh, he loves to play, you know, collect some of the newer sets too. He loves to foil cards. He loves the history of magic. And remember when I talked about nostalgia with you guys about why magic is so important to people? It's the same thing for any class of collector. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. You love it because of the nostalgia for the game. And in some cases, if you're able to afford a million dollar type of collection, uh, you know, you're, a, you're wanting to collect the elite uh, collectibles and they become not just you know the cards but their artifacts their historical items you know one day I wouldn't be surprised guys if you guys walked into like the Smithsonian or some type of museum where they show one of the BGS 10 beta black lotuses and that that kind of display of magic is like a piece of art it's a piece of history of our game um, and it resembles a lot of like baseball cards and comic books you know, you look at like Superman number one, I believe it's sold recently for almost $3 million. Think about that. That kind of history, the storytelling behind that, the movies that were created, um, the fandom, right? It's all about the history of something. Um, so I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. There's a lot to this video and it's not very often I get a chance to share something very exclusive, something very special. And if you're looking to purchase any of these cards, if you're looking to sell some of these cards to me, I'm always happy to consult with you. Just hit me up at daniel at vintagemagic.com or go to vintagemagic.com and take a look at my website. Um, I, I think the most important thing for this is the white glove delivery for clients. A lot of clients ask me, hey Dan, I don't want this thing shipped. I, I honestly would like you to fly to see me. This particular, particular client, I'm flying to New York to hand deliver these cards to the client for a safe delivery. And I've done this for uh, hundreds of clients in the past. And honestly, I feel way, way, way more peace of mind knowing that these valuable artifacts are not shipped in FedEx or the Postal Service. I think it also uh, speaks a testament of my interest for relationships because this particular client, we're gonna have an opportunity to place a magic, we're gonna have an opportunity to talk about our families and life and projects uh, he wants to do. And I'm gonna have a great time, maybe even watching a Broadway show when I'm in New York, going to Times Square. You know, I think we're gonna have some sushi, we're gonna have some food. These type of memories, I can't wait to have with the client because I've spoken to this guy you know, on Skype for so long, right? You, you talk to these clients and now I can finally meet someone who has so much passion for the game. All right guys, I hope you guys enjoy the video. I can't wait to share with more collections with you guys. Thanks again for watching. Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. For more information about our consulting and professional services, visit VintageMagic.com. Thank you, everyone, for supporting our channel. It means a lot to me that you're enjoying the content we're putting out there. I have a Patreon page that supporters have access to special perks and rewards. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash vintage magic. As a patron, you receive exciting pricing on sealed product, flash sales, annual gifts, and personalized consulting services from me. Again, thank you for subscribing to our videos and supporting the channel. I love meeting players, collectors, and investors all over the world. If you see me at a Grand Prix, Please come by and say hi. I would love to meet you. Thank you everyone for your support and friendship.